haven't sold it to you know China, Russia, Iran, and to further their own goals. I mean, mm. one's need of money making is another government's need to get an edge on their enemies' uh, goals. I mean, it's two birds of one stone. Need to make money. Need need to get an edge. Two birds, one stone. Hmm. But I, I, this was back when, during the governmental exchange between Biden and uh, Donald Trump. Then again, this is all. This is my speculation. I'll be the first one to admit as such. Hmm. Uh. Let's go to a more heroic story. Have you heard of the Canadian guy uh, with one eye, uh, two SMGs, his buddy was killed, and then he liberated an entire town by himself? No. What's his story? Uh, it's basically Canadian guy, World War II, him and his buddy were scouts, they were scouting out a town for uh, that was going to be bombed by artillery. Uh, yeah, his, uh, they wanted to stop the artillery because there are still civilians inside and so uh, they got they, they were attempting to get closer his body got shot and died the other Canadian guy got mad he grabbed, his, uh, he grabbed the two Sten guns um, he went into the town uh, went house to house uh, fighting he used grenades to make himself look like a larger force Bring in mind, that town had hundreds of German SS soldiers. And so, he made himself look like a bigger force was attacking. Uh, he got to, he got to, I think, the, it was the seventh house, and he found a, a resistance leaders there. Not leaders, sorry, resistance soldiers there uh, from the French. And, um, so with their help, uh, he rested inside that house and then continued the next day. And eventually drove out hundreds of it. German SS soldiers out of the town. Uh, and then he made a friendly exchange, surprisingly, uh, with the with the leading captain of the group. Like they both promised not to shoot each other if he allowed the leading captain to leave, which he did. And the leading captain left. Uh, so he captured about thirty to forty soldiers, bring them back to the camp. And then told the told the guys, hey, don't artillery this place. There's civilians and resistance fighters here. So he prevented not only um, many civilian and resistance deaths made by the Canadian and American artillery units there, but he also single-handedly liberated a town um, with only one with only one casualty, and that would be his friend. Uh, and after the town he was shot in the eye and so he was the eyeless canadian he won i think was the what's the what's the highest medal you can get in the royal british army was it is it the purple heart or is that american oh let me get it i know the per i know the purple heart is one of the highest accommodations you can get in, in the u.s military as for british i wouldn't know because i simply don't know here we go, yeah, uh, he got the Victoria Cross, the highest and most prestigious reward in the British honor system. Goddamn right. Yeah, uh, he was God forced right. to get out, of, get out of the war, though, because he, he started getting massive headaches, a lot of sicknesses, because, you know, the bullet was lodged in his brain when he was shot in the eye. Yeah, so he was in I hospital for months. such conditions. He got, he Poor got, guy, he fully recovered though, and lived a though. good life. Nah. I'd say that's a pretty damn good thing to have after fighting for everything that he went through. Yeah, very impressive as well. Like, most Canadian scouts record. don't even get that much, um, don't even get that much training. Here, let me get his name, actually. Here we go. His name was Leo Major, single-handedly chased the Nazis from Zwolle in 1945 on the evening of April 14th, 1945. Uh, Canadian soldier Leo Major single-handedly liberated the Dutch town of Zwolle from the Nazis in a story that's almost too incredible to be true. So yeah, it's one, of the, one of the few war hero stories. 
That's awesome. Hmm, I think he was promoted after that what, to, to new lieutenant, I think. Wow. <gasps> it's, it's working! You got it working! You did it! You did it! You did it! Oh no, he, he wasn't given the Victoria Cross. He was given... Um, he was given the Distinguished Conduct Medal. There we go, that one. Still better than nothing. Yeah, what, I think it's the second highest. I got your tail. It's pretty damn it's working. award. Mm. You finally did it. Did a good job. So he, he fell into a depressive state for a couple of years because he lost his buddy, but that's understandable. Yeah, poor guy. Other than that, he recovered fully, had a good life, lived up to the age of 80, I think, and then he passed away. Oh, wow. Rest in peace. Yeah, very goddamn tough as hell. Never mess with Canadians. <laughs> oh, God. He almost reminds me of this one guy. He was a Finnish sniper, I think. Known as the White Death. Oh, the guy that killed 506 Soviet soldiers during the Winter War? That too, but not just him. Uh, there was another guy. He uh, he was known as the man who faced God in the face and laughed. He OD'd on meth. Or at least at the time, Pervatin, which was the de facto meth at the time. Oh, I mean, these were two titans in their own right. The man who killed, as you said, about 500-odd Russians. Yeah, and the guy you're guy talking who... about is the White Death. Uh, Simo yeah. Haya, the guy who killed 505 Soviet soldiers. Yeah, I mean, it was him plus the guy who OD on meth and laughed in the face of God and survived. Hmm. I mean, those are some fucking titans of industry. Not just, well, titans of World War II. War history is some weird shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, there. Oh, this I reminds me. Of a story in Vietnam, my grandfather told me. So his friends, um, they're inside. So you, Vietnam, the Vietnamese had this like spiritual thing, where there are certain places they wouldn't go because they believed it to be haunted. And so, I've my heard yeah, stories. my grandfather's friends went into those areas. Want to know what they did? It brought those. Uh, stories to life, I would imagine, but if not, they please used, entertain me. Please. They used their most modern speakers and played horrifying noises and sounds, which scared the crap out of Vietnamese soldiers. That sounds like something that the U.S. Army would do, knowing yeah. Fifth, S Fifth SFG the way I, w I do. That does not surprise me one bit. What better way to fight your enemies than with their own myths and stories? Mm, psychological warfare can be very powerful if used correctly. That I can. Especially if know your, your enemy, enemy is know yourself. Yep, know your enemy, know yourself. Yep. Let's see, what else? What other war stories? Um... I know back in the day during the Cold War, the U.S. had to buy a bunch of titanium in order to supply the SR-71 Blackbird. They set up a bunch of uh, shell companies to buy said titanium from the Russians in order to build the SR-71 Blackbird to spy on them. There's that. <laughs> yeah, That's I remember tame. that. Um, you know the SR-72 that's being built? I know if... I were to guess, I know that's another spy plane beyond that, no yeah. idea. It's based on the SR-71, but modern, uh, twice as big, uh, and can go twice as high. Basically, I think it goes into the stratosphere. That's and, a yeah. and it can take goal. extremely high quality pictures from up there, and go and zoom in really goddamn far. That's impressive, and that's hard to do. Yeah, very hard. I'm impressed, and that's hard to do. It's supposed to be finished in 2030. That's if humanity even lives until then. <laughs> yep, that's if, and, and I mean a pretty goddamn big if. Hmm. Another invention, I think it's the, um... Uh... The Japanese, they have something going on, a secret project that they're making, 
and it should be finished by 2040. And from from what we know through only rumors and speculation, like there there is no evidence of this whatsoever. There is rumors and speculation going around that they're building um, the most powerful nuclear weapon in the entire world. Hmm. Like much That's a pretty ballsy goal. I think it was almost bigger. Sorry, no, it is bigger. It's almost uh, twice the explosion size of the Saar bomber, and it's an ICBM with missile capabilities. Sounds like big humanity goal. won't. Sounds like humanity's definitely not making it past twenty forty. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> I'm with you there, plant lord. I'm with you there. Uh, I'd be so, surprised yeah. if we made it past 2025. 20, I'd be surprised. Yeah, the thing is, it's not confirmed. It's only rumors and speculations. We have zero idea what the hell they're making. Funny how often <laughs> rumor goes until it becomes truth. Mm, rumors but can become that again, dangerous. Me being the cynic. Yeah, if yeah it, um, can be. If it is true, uh, they can be a massive threat because... You know, normal ICBMs, it takes like two or three of them to take out an entire city, for example, the size of Moscow. But with this, it will take one, and Moscow will be wiped off the map. Same with uh, Shanghai, wiped off the map. DC, wiped off the map. Like, this nuke is so LA, powerful, it gone, should Portland, be considered gone. a weapon. Gone. Miami, gone. Hmm. I mean, Apparently, yeah, I mean... this nuke should also be able to fit on an inter- um, inter-global uh, inter-global continental missile so it'll be able to go global with almost infinite range around the world oh wasn't there, wasn't looks like they're planning looks like they're planning on go ahead you, you, looks like they're planning on uh, smacking the shit out of the first person they pit get pissed off by <laughs> that would probably be I need to be getting to bed here pretty goddamn soon, but wasn't there once talk of the Russians having an a, a inter-railway nuclear missile system? I remember hearing about that. Oh, yeah. The um, fact that it was incredibly difficult to track, if not impossible to track. Yeah, no, it was fake. The fact that they could, they could hook up the launching, really. Yeah, the Russians lied about it. You know yeah, what's funny? Whenever China and Russia lie about something, and America actually makes something to counter it, China and Russia lie about their inventions, America doesn't, and China and Russia unintentionally put America, like, a decade uh, past them through technology. And they do that so much. For example... That's way to fuck yourself. Yeah, for example, to counter their hypersonic missiles, which are, by the way, extremely way too overhyped. Like, they're not as useful as people think they are. And um, to counter their hypersonic missiles, which we don't even know if they're real, uh, they are, they're currently making... A, they made a partnership with the North Grutten Company, and they're currently making something called hypersonics, which are currently in testing. Uh, it's basically, they're little, like, <sighs> drone things, which can be launched from missiles. Each of them can go about Mark 5 to Mark 6, and they're able to take, uh, oh, oh, they're able to take indirect paths, and so they cannot be countered, and they're able to hit about 20 different missiles at the same time through just one carrier missile. That's destructively beautiful. Yeah, not only that, they're also updating uh, their SAM software and updating their chip software. That way, their their um, anti missile lasers as well as Seaweeds and CRAMs will easily be able to counteract hypersonic missiles as well. This thing is, people Amen. think hypersonic missiles, hypersonic going really fast. They seem to think going really fast equals not being able to be countered. But they also don't realize that laser defense systems, lasers go the speed of light. Hypersonic missiles go the speed of sound. And they mm, eat whenever. Sound. Yeah, Mar I think the the thing uh, Russia's and China's hypersonic missiles goes Mark Four, Mark Five. Uh, lasers, uh, anti-missile lasers, they go the speed of light. 
and they're making <laughs> yeah they're making a prototype a uh, supercharged heated laser uh and currently it's been able to melt um a sheet of metal in less than two seconds like fully melt fully melt into liquid that's impressive you know this was from uh, i think 800 feet away and they were able to melt it in less than two seconds <laughs> oh yeah, man that's cool. some crazy shit yeah so russia and china again be in mind, the F-35 was also an Again. unintentional design, because they thought that China was making a new fighter, which China lied about, and then America made the F-35, which put America years above China in technology. And the T-14 Armada, they thought was going to be finished in 2014, and so they uh, had just finished making, just I think a couple weeks ago, the M1A2 SEP V4, which counters the T14, and their new information came out that they only had 20 T14s, and only eight of them are operational. Be in mind, it was supposed to be finished in 2014, the T14 design. Funny how times change in such short years. And yeah. How often, yeah. Well, that's a few planes often get made in such time. Yeah, so the only disadvantage that <laughs> the, America the has media. against Russia and China is the fact that they have hypersonic missiles, which America doesn't have defenses for yet, and the fact that they have more manpower. That's it. America is the most... Te America is technologically much more advanced than both China and Russia. You, you see, the more I keep talking, the more, the less, I, the, the least, the less amount of time I think humanity is going to last. <laughs> uh, now, now I'd be surprised if we make it, I, I'm, now I'd be surprised if we make it to 2023. 20, oh, uh, yeah, about that. Uh, apparently there's talks of NATO forces going into Odessa to reinforce Kiev and... Uh, possibly start an advancement on the southern front. So, World War Three may be coming soon. Sadly, NATO will be And uh, we're not gonna... And we're not making it through 2022. Let's go. Yeah, if NATO does carry out that plan, not only will it make them the aggressor, because Ukraine isn't in NATO yet, um, it would also start World War Three, which would kill a lot of people. Of course, Russia would eventually be curbed on. To... I wouldn't be surprised by that, but it is to say some members in the Ukraine parliament or government wouldn't try to make some kind of retroactive agreement, hence forcing the issue, and knowing the American government like I do, it is to say that they wouldn't start World War Three to fatten their own fucking po uh, pockets along the way. Hmm. It is to say it wouldn't be a whole bunch of two birds, one stone along the way. Well, we think well, Russia's going to formally declare complex. war on Ukraine anyway, because uh, Russia's losing a lot of resources, and recently they just sent, I think, another 100,000 soldiers into the fight. I feel bad for the families of the soldiers. Hmm. Just... There's a lot of drama between the soldiers of both sides and the civilians of both sides. Because the soldiers, the Russian soldiers, at first, they thought they were doing training. They were lied about between in the operation. They thought they were going into training when they were going into Ukraine. And then the Ukrainian soldiers and the civilians that joined the army, including Azov, um, they thought that the Russians uh, were going to absolutely massacre them. They thought they had no chance at first. And so... And between Ukrainian and Russian civilians, they've been harassing each other because each other thinks that they're that each other's nation is the aggressor, even though, you know. The I, I believe in something called blame the government, not the people, uh, and and Thank surprisingly, you. yeah, and surprisingly, a lot of people do not agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's American politics 101. 
government looks out for itself, well, fucking the rest of every other individual person. Fuck us, right? Fuck the little guy. But mm. I'm being cynical here. Oh, don't worry, I, I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, I... Okay, there we go. No, <laughs> the guy no, behind I, I wrote something up there <laughs> on the will, and... No, it, it's not the gentleman behind you. I wrote up a Lamau on the wall, and I wanted to get, wanted to get a photo of that. Anywho, honestly, it's been an honor talking to both of you gentlemen again. I need to be getting to bed here for a couple hours. I hope to run into you both again some sometime in the future. Oh, yeah, I hope, I hope to so. meet you both again sometime. You too. I need to see read you. up on my war history and Kraya and chaos theory. Have a good night, both of you gentlemen. You hope too. to see you again. Man, I loved that guy. He was interesting. Fun to talk to. <laughs> yes. Now you understand why I now you understand why I added him. It's not it, it, the, his age was a coincidence, okay? Got uh, okay. I'm not sure how that's a coincidence. I think it was just an accident, but yeah, sure. Uh anyways, come on, let's go let's go watch more memes. Yes. I just oh, yeah, realized I've been recording for oh, yeah. 21 minutes. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to stop the recording. You, you, like, recorded that entire...